And now we have here new example. Now we are asked to compute for the deflection at the mid span of this um, beam. We have a 6 meter beam having a uniformly distributed load which is 600 newton per meter. So we are asked to compute the, the deflection at the mid span so therefore at 3 meters from both ends since this is 6 meter beam. Okay. So the first thing we need to do here is of course to compute for the reaction. So we can um, compute first for the reaction 1 by summing up moment at 2. We have 0 counterclockwise positive. Then we have here negative 6 times R1 okay, minus the resultant of 600 newton per meter which is 600 times 3. Okay, So we have um, this is pa plus since it is rotating counterclockwise. So we have 600 times 3 times the moment arm from 2 we have since this is 1.5 okay that is um, where the location of our resultant one half of 3 then we have 2 meters so we have here a moment arm which is 3.5 meters and this equals to 0 so we have our R1 here which is equal to 1050 this is in Newton Okay, so our R2 here, we just sum up forces vertical. We have summation of force vertical zero is equal to zero. Upward forces are positive. Then we have um, R1 plus R2 minus 600 times 3 is equal to zero. We have R1, 1050 plus R2 minus 1,800 is equal to 0. So our R2 here is equal to 750 Newton. So we have 750 Newton at reaction 2 and 1,050 Newton at reaction 1. Okay? So after this, we are now going to create a moment equation that we will be needing in our double integration. So now take note, we have our beam here um, discontinuous since we have our 600 Newton per meter here um, acting within 3 meters only. So we did not have a uniformly load for the entire span of our beam. So therefore this is discontinuous. So we need to um, convert this into a continuous beam so that we can apply a Macaulay method. So in this case, we need to extend our uniform load up to the farthest point no, from our um, support one. So in this case, we need to extend this one with uh, the same magnitude or the same load. So this one is 600 Newton per meter. Okay. Now take note, we have introduced a new load. So therefore, we need to introduce uh, the same type of load but is in opposite direction so that we would have our beam in balance. Since we know that the behavior of our beam depends on the intensity of our load. But if we introduce a new load here, there would be a change in that behavior. Okay, so therefore, there would be a change in the deflection. And there would also be a change in the um, reactions and all the computation. So therefore, we need to have uh, another load which is the same in magnitude but opposite in direction so that we could say that we are still having the same type of beam. Okay, Or we are as if introducing a zero load in our beam. So we have an opposite load acting at this point. So it is have um, the same load, let's say it's 600 newton per meter okay so we have now converted our beam into a continuous load so we can now cut our beam at this point okay so this this be our section one so by cutting at that point we have our section which is this one now if we cut our section we could have our internal shear and internal moment here exposed at section 1 in which our section 1 here is at x distance from our support 1 having a 1050 newton reaction okay now take note we have our uh, load here that was being introduced okay this one is 600 newton per meter which is the extension of our original load and then to balance our beam, we 
introduced and the, uh, the same load but opposite in direction this one so that they would have an equivalent of zero so that this load here would have no effect in the behavior of our beam that's the reason why we introduce an opposite load okay so our goal here is to create a moment equation so that we could use that in our double integration method so we can sum up moment at section one is equal to zero counterclockwise positive then we have our reaction one that is 1050 newton which is this is negative since it is rotating clockwise so 1050 the moment arm from section one is x then we have um, the resultant of 600 newton per meter so we combined our load from this point up to the section one okay at this point so we have um, 600 newton per meter from this point to this point and their line of action is x minus one since we have x minus one meter so therefore this length from this point to this point is x minus one so we have the resultant which is equal to this one and this resultant is 600 times the length of action x minus one okay so we have um, since the rotation is counterclockwise, so we have plus 600 times x minus 1. And the moment arm from our section 1 is this one here. And the moment arm is one half of its length of action. So therefore, this is x minus 1 over 2. So we have times x minus 1 divided by 2. Okay? Then we have this load here that is acting upward. And then the length of action of this load is x minus 4 since we have the distance from 1.1 1, 1 to this point is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. Then we have x here. So therefore, we have x minus 4 which is the length at this load of this load. So we have the reaction is 600 times x minus 4. So we have here, um, the rotation is clockwise, so therefore it is negative, correct? That is 600 times x minus 4. And the moment arm is one half of its length of action, that is x minus 4 over 2. So we have times x minus 4 over 2. And then we have the internal moment here, which is counterclockwise. So we have plus the moment, and this is equals to 0. Okay, so we can um, simplify this further. We have m is equal to, we transpose everything to the right. Then we have 1050x minus, when we have 600 divided by 2, this gives us 300. Then we have x minus 1 squared, correct? Then we have, if we transpose this to the right, then it gives us positive. Now, since we have 600 here divided by 2, we still have 300 then x minus 4 squared, correct? So we combine um, this binomial here. Now, in the rule of Macaulay, you do not need to um, evaluate this one, simplify this um, square of binomial here. No further evaluation of this um, term is required. So we can now use our relationship of our deflection to our moment equation in which we have um, the flexural rigidity times the second derivative correct is equal to that is the moment okay moment equation so we have here our frictional rigidity the second derivative of y is equal to we write the equation 1050x minus 300 x minus 1 squared plus 300 x minus 4 squared okay then we integrate this one so if we integrated this would become ei now we have dy here so if we integrate this with respect to dx of course we have dx here or this this one is um with respect to dx squared so we have our integration here this would become um first derivative so y prime is equal to this is just um, power rule we have 1050 
x squared over 2 minus 300 over 3 x minus 1 cube plus 300 over 3 x minus 4 cube plus of course our arbitrary constant c1 so this is our slope equation now if we integrate this further we would come up with our equation for deflection so if we integrate this further with respect to dx then we have here um, ei we have y is equal to 1050x raised to the 3 over 6 minus 300 times x minus 1 to the 4th over 12 it's just power rule plus 300 x minus 4 raised to the 4th over 12 plus c1x plus c2 okay so this one is our equation for deflection now in our equation we still have arbitrary constant c1 and c2 so we have to compute for the value of these constants here by using a boundary condition now going back to our beam now we know in our beam that if we have our x is equal to 0 okay and our x equal to 0 here is on the support we do not have deflection at the support correct unless na lang if we have a settlement at this point but since this is a rigid here so we have our y or a deflection at this point is equal to 0 and then we can now compute for for this c however we still have another boundary condition in which we have in we have x is equal to 6 our 6 here is when our section is at this point or at the right end support at r2 okay now at this point we still don't have a deflection so these are our boundary conditions okay so we by substituting the value of x's and y's then we can um, go to the computation of our arbitrary constant Let's try first the boundary condition when our x here is equal to zero so therefore our y or deflection is equal to zero take note this is at support one okay so we substitute everything so we have um zero for this term since we have y is equal to zero is equal to when, as, when we substitute zero in this term then we come up with zero now if we substitute zero here then we have 300 times zero minus one raised to the fourth over 12 then plus we still have um, 300 times 0 minus 4 raised to the 4 over 12 plus um, we have um, 0 plus C2 now take note guys from Macaulay method again if we have our X minus A raised to the N when our result inside the bracket is negative then we have it equal to 0 okay so therefore this one can be zero since we have um zero minus one this is negative one and the same as with this term here we have zero minus four this gives us negative four so therefore this can be equals to zero so therefore we can say that our c2 here is equal to zero now for c1 we, we have another boundary condition when x is equal to six our deflection at x equal to 6 is equal to 0 okay so we do not have um, deflection at support 2 okay this is at support 2 so we substitute everything in this equation we have um, flexural rigidity times y is 0 is equal to 150 or 1050 times 6 raised to the 3 over 6 minus 300 times 6 minus 1 raised to the 4 over 12 plus 300 times 6 minus 4 raised to the fourth over 12 plus our c1 here times 6 then we know that c2 is 0 so we have the value of our c1 here is equal to negative 3762.5 okay so we can now finalize our equation for deflection we have 
So we have here the final equation for our deflection. Since we have already computed the value of our C1, so we change that into negative 3762.5. Okay. Now our C2 here um, was eliminated since we know that the value of our C2 is equal to 0. So this is now our equation for our deflection. The problem asks for the deflection at the midspan. Now we know from our beam, our midspan is at 3 meters from both ends. So we have the midspan here, which is 3 meters from both ends. So we have our x here is equal to 3 meters. So we substitute a value of x in our equation, then we have EIY is equal to 1050 times 3 raised to the 3 over 6 minus 300 times 3 minus 1 raised to the 4 over 12 plus 300 times 3 minus 4 raised to the 4 over 12 minus 3762.5 times our value of x here is 3. Okay, so this would be our equation. Now, we know that if we evaluate this bracket here, we have 3 minus 4, this gives us negative 1. And again, from Macaulay, when we have negative inside the bracket, then we consider that as 0. So we can set that as 0. So we have here our deflection. In terms of Vi, we have negative 6962.5. Okay? Or we have Y here is equal to negative 6962.5 over Ei. Since we do not have a modulus of elasticity and cross-section of our beam, so we can um, express our answer here in terms of EI. And we have our unit here that is in Newton cubic meter since we have at from this one, 1050, this is in Newton, correct? And 3 is in meter, so we have cubic meter here. So if we draw our the deflection of our beam, then we would have this deflection, which is this one, okay, in which at B here, or at 3 meter, we have the deflection, but we do not know exactly where's the location of our maximum deflection yet. So let's try to assume that this is the deflection diagram. So we have at B here, let's say this is negative 6962.5 Newton meter cube over EI. Again, this is negative, so therefore we have our deflection downward. Okay, that's it for the double integration method. So if you have a question, you can ask me through the comment section. For more videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for listening.